Hello everyone, thank you for coming back to another video and the topic of uh, today's video is Righteousness by Faith. Many times when we read the Bible and we overlook certain certain phrases, uh, certain words that uh, have deeper meaning and uh, it is imperative, it is, it is very important that we understand what is really meant especially when we're dealing with this phrase that uh, righteousness by faith and what is meant by righteousness by faith so let's dig into the word and um, i'm going to start reading in romans chapter 5 verse 15 to 21 and uh, this time it's going to be this verse these verses will be in esb as it is a much easier reading to begin with and uh, much easier to understand than the KJV. So you know, without any further delay, let's go and start here in Romans. Uh, but the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many die through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. As the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if because one man's trespass death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness, the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, Grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Once again, that is the first Adam and the last Adam. The last Adam is a gift, a free gift of righteousness. Let's move on to Romans chapter 10, verses 3 to 4. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Once again, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Let's move on to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8 to 9. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Here in this verse, uh, you might want to compare this to ministration of the Spirit is the ministration of righteousness. The ministration of, of condemnation means administration of the law of Moses. Let's move on to the next verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, the ministration of that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. How is the gift of righteousness deliver or minister to us? Let's go to Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith 
by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So through faith of Jesus Christ, by faith of Jesus Christ, we receive the righteousness of God. Not your own righteousness, but the righteousness that is of God. Let's go to Philippians, Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. And be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Not our righteousness, the righteousness which is of God by faith. What is the mechanism, the way by which the righteousness is manifested in us? And let's go to First John chapter 4, verse 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he had given us of his spirit. He had given us of his spirit. The mystery is that in Colossians chapter 1, 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the mystery among the Gentiles is Christ in you. Okay, let's move on to the next one. The free gift of righteousness is Christ in you. As we heard from the prior verses, we're given free gift of righteousness, which is now Christ in you. First Corinthians six seventeen, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. His spirit and our spirit becomes one spirit. John fourteen twenty, at that day you shall know that I am in my Father. And ye in me, and I in you. John seventeen twenty one, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. His spirit and your spirit become one. The inner man is the new man, born of God. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 and that he put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness in righteousness and in true holiness <clears throat> let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 to 19 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints, that is, what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that it might be filled with all the fullness of God. First John 2.29 if ye know that he is righteous, Jesus Christ, if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. And we know that this only happens if Jesus abides in you, only through Jesus Christ. John 15, 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. John 15, 8. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Ephesians 5, 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. 
the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Philippians 1.11 Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ, not by you, which are by Jesus Christ, and to the glory and praise of God. And I'm going to leave you with this final verse. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And Jesus Christ abides in you. His spirit and your spirit becomes one. He is the righteousness within you. The manifestation of righteousness is a presence of Jesus Christ in you. Thank you for listening to this video. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.